Hey YouTube, it's Justin, aka Demonic Sweaters, here with another electronic drum video. Today, I want to talk about Easy Drummer 2. Now, on my last video I just uploaded, Kevin Cernock asked, why don't I use VSD plugins for the sounds? Well, uh, well, that's kind of a complicated answer, but I do, actually, sometimes, and I figured I should make a video about that. And actually, I've been meaning to do this video for a really long time, uh, it's just, you know, with the list of videos that I want to do, it's just taken me a while to get to it. So, finally today, here we are with Easy Drummer 2 VST Tutorial. This is actually really easy to do, so it won't take too long, but before we get started on that, let's talk about Pure VPN. Internet privacy is a really important thing these days. Everywhere you go online, people are tracking you, they know exactly what you're doing, they know who you are, they know where you live, they know what you buy, they know everything about you. Uh, you want to stop that? Check out Pure VPN. There's a link down below, and you can go there for a special price. And they have a lot of options for monthly subscriptions as well as annual. And what Pure VPN is, if you don't know what a VPN is, it's basically a secure tunnel to the internet that not even your ISP, internet service provider, can see or track what you're doing. So some people are like, well, why would I want to do that? I'm not doing anything wrong. Well. Yes, you're not doing anything wrong. It's the companies that are doing something wrong because they're all tracking us all the time. So check out that link down below if you want to take back your privacy online. Also, be sure to follow me on Spotify. There's a link down below. Follow Demonic Sweaters as well as Manasota and Hums, my other two projects. So if you can follow those, that would be awesome. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started and uh, let's talk about Easy Drummer 2. Now, so before we even get into this, I just want to explain a couple of things that some new users may be confused about. Uh, for one, MIDI in general can be confusing for some people and uh, what a VST even is and all these different terms you probably hear all the time. Uh, some of you might not know what those are, so I'm gonna explain those very briefly before we get started. Now, in a recording software such as Ableton Live, which is what I have up here behind me, uh, Ableton Live is considered a digital audio workstation, and so is Pro Tools or Cubase or Sonar, GarageBand, uh, Logic Pro. These are all digital audio workstations, or sometimes you'll see it written as DAW or DAW. Now, these programs are designed for producing music. In a lot of these programs, or if it's a real DAW, it's going to have a feature called MIDI. Now, MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface, and it's been around for a really, really long time. And one of the things that people get confused about with MIDI is MIDI actually makes no sound by itself. MIDI is just a way for instruments to talk to each other or you know, devices to talk to each other. It's just a communication device, and that's the only thing you really need to know about it to understand how it works, uh, generally. Now, a VST sometimes can be, is like thrown around as a generic term, but really VST is a specific type of audio plugin that was designed by the company Steinberg, who makes Cubase. Now, people just sort of generally say VST when they really mean plugins. Uh, now, of course, the plugin that is on Ableton that I'm using for Easy Drummer 2 is indeed a VST uh, type of plugin, but that's not the only type of plugins there are, is what I'm trying to get across. Like Logic uses its own type of plugins, Apple has them, Linux has different types of plugins, uh, Pro Tools has plugins, I believe they're called AAX, and there's just a lot of different types. So VST is just a type of audio plugin, and that's really the important thing there. Uh, plugins are basically they can be a wide range of a lot of different things they can either be midi plugins they can be audio plugins they can be visualization plugins they can be you know scientific data plugins all types of stuff uh, for processing and working with audio so hopefully all of that is making some kind of sense to you and it's cleared up a little bit of the confusion so what does midi have to do with these plugins now midi is a way that we can use a device like an electronic drum set to talk to a plugin like Easy Drummer 2. And that's exactly what we're gonna be doing in this tutorial. Now, actually, I'm not gonna be using my full drum set. I'm actually gonna be using my Pile PTE D06, which I have right here, which it, well, it basically is a full drum set. It's just a small, uh, compact, portable drum set. But this actually works quite well for Easy Drummer. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to hook it all up and uh, what you can expect when you start using it. So here we go. 
Okay, first off, let's talk about some different types of MIDI connections. Now, MIDI, old school MIDI, basically looks like this. Uh, this is a traditional uh, MIDI DIN cable. Uh, these have been around for ages, like I said before, uh, since like the early 1980s. And this is my Roland TD-8 module, and I have this hooked up via MIDI to a hardware MIDI interface, which I have over there. You can't really see it too well. Uh, but this is a uh, old Alesis IO4 interface, and this has audio and MIDI built into it, and this connects via USB to my computer. But what we're going to be doing first here is actually using my Pile PTE D06, like I said, and all you need to hook this thing up is a USB cable. Now, this is going to be the case for 99% of you guys out there who have you know, either this drum set or an Alesis Nitro Mesh or an Alesis Surge, or in any newer uh, Roland module or Lisa's module or Yamaha, they all should have a USB uh, type output. And all you have to do is run the USB out, plug it into your computer. And that's pretty much all you need to do as far as hooking up. All right, now this is actually probably the most important part uh, when you're using a VST uh, software with electronic drums, and that is latency. Latency is basically how long your computer takes to process audio to where you hear it in the headphones and to when it's being recorded in your DAW. Now, if you have a long latency or a high latency, when you play your electronic drums, there's going to be a significant delay into when you hear what you hit in your headphones. And this can make it really hard to play in time if you can't hear yourself uh, in time, basically. So latency is determined by your audio interface. My audio interface I have on this computer is a solid state logic um, SSL2, which is a very good interface. I'll post a link to one of these down below. Uh, these are capable of getting very, very low latency. And the way that I can configure that in Ableton, now this is going to vary depending on what type of software you're using, but in Ableton, if I just go to hardware setup here, and then hopefully you guys can see that. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so hardware setup, and right here, your ASIO buffer size. This is the really important thing when it comes to latency. I have mine set to 64 samples, which gives me a very low latency at only 2.95 seconds. Now, your audio interface as well as your CPU on your computer are going to determine how low you can get that number. The lower you can get it, the better it is. I could probably go lower than this even on, you know, on this computer, but 64 works fine for me. And if you go too low, sometimes you can get audio glitches. So if you go anything above 256, your latency is probably going to be a little bit difficult to deal with um, when you're playing. 256, you may still be, still be able to play okay, but anything above that is going to be pretty difficult. So I recommend trying to get down to at least 128. Uh, 64 is better. And that's usually, usually you can't tell anything below five milliseconds. It's really hard to tell. Uh, but yeah, so this is where all that takes place. Now, if your audio interface can't do that, if you can't get your latency down lower you know, than 128 or 256, then there's really no reason to even do this because it's just going to be really difficult to play. It's not gonna sound good to your ears and you're gonna sound off time. Now, of course, you could go in, the other way to do this is actually just record the MIDI. Like if you can't get a good latency, what you could do is audio, you know, listen to the audio from your electronic drums and just record the MIDI but don't listen to it. But then when you go into your mix, then you can put the Easy Drummer plugin on there and replace all the drum sounds. So that's another way to do it. But anyway, I'll talk about that a little bit more in detail later. Uh, but for the time being, let's go ahead and show you the rest of the setup here. So let's just create a new track and that way you guys can see how I did this. So I just created a new MIDI track here. And what I'm gonna do is just select Easy Drummer, just drop that in as my plugin on the new MIDI track. And then Ableton, this is super easy. Uh, basically, that's all you have to do because by default, all MIDI ends are selected. So if I hit my drum pad, you can see that Easy Drummer is reacting already. But if for some reason you don't see anything like that and whatever you're using, go in and make sure your drum set is selected as your MIDI input. Mine is just listed as eDrum. 
But if you have an Alesis Nitro mesh, it should say Nitro, I believe. Now in Ableton, that's located here on MIDI from, but this is going to vary depending on which DAW you're using. So I'm just gonna leave mine set to all ends. And then I'm gonna go ahead and record a little bit and you guys can hear what this sounds like. All right, so we recorded some MIDI, and now let's go ahead and take a look at here. All right, so now we're inside Ableton. I switched my audio driver so I could show you guys the screen capture, what this looks like. Um, let me just go ahead and zoom in. And as you can see, what we recorded here, this is just MIDI. And like I said before, there's no audio here. It's just data. And if we play this back, we're gonna hear Easy Drummer. And so what's cool about this, if I want, I can go into Easy Drummer and let's open it up here. Oops. And then I can change kits. I can go here to Modern. We have all these different sounds. So let's play this back. An 80s drum sound. Disco pop. Vintage set here. Let's go this glam delay. So, oh, that was cool. I like that one. Let's go back and listen to that again. Head compressed. So it gives you a lot of options after the fact. Now, do VSTs or Easy Drummer really sound better than electronic drum modules? You know, this is really open to opinion. Um, I honestly don't really use these very much or, you know, when I'm working on projects, I kind of prefer to use the actual drum module. Like I like the sounds in my TD-8. These sound cool and they sound more modern, which for a lot of people, you'll like that better, but I like kind of the vintage digital sounds that get produced from my module. Now, some newer modules might not sound as good, but you know, it's all up for opinion and, and you know, sound is 100% subjective. And it's basically like, if you think it sounds good, then you should use it. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all. But it does give you a lot of options, which is really cool. And you can totally replace the drum sounds like one thing that's actually kind of cool to do, which I've done in the past, is you can record audio and MIDI at the same time out of like a drum set like the PTE-06 or an Alesis Nitro. All you have to do is just, you know, set up one channel for the audio and then another channel for MIDI. And then if you're happy with the module uh, drum sounds, you can use those, but you're not tied to them. You can go in and you can replace, you know, the drum sounds completely with a totally different sound using the plugin, or you can replace parts. Now in Ableton, you don't even have to use Easy Drummer. Ableton has a lot of drum sounds built into it, which I have done before. So let's just pick one of the drum sets in Ableton. And where's my, there's one in here I really like, like a vintage 707, I think is what it is. There it is, Kit Core 707. So let's add that and hear how that sounds if it's gonna match up. Sometimes they don't map up correctly, but I think it will, let's see. Yep. So this is all the sounds built in 
the into Ableton Live, this is not using the control. And that's a really cool sounding, you know, obviously it doesn't sound realistic, but it's not supposed to. This is an old drum machine, uh, sound, basically samples from an old Roland 707 drum machine. So anyway, lots of possibilities when you use plugins or, you know, software. Ableton, like I said, has a lot of stuff built in, or you can, you know, buy Easy Drummer 2, which is pretty affordable. It's, you know, probably the cheapest one out of all of those drum replacement plugins. So it's pretty good for that. All right, so that should get you started using Easy Drummer 2. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and you learned something. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And like I mentioned before, be sure to follow me on Spotify. There's a link down below. And check out my sponsor, Pure VPN, if you want to get some private internet access. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody. And I'll see you guys really soon. Have a great day. Later.